In this video, I am going to walk you through the experimenter feature in Witness Horizon and how to use it to optimize your models. Those of you who have taken the Witness training course will recognize this model as the Acme Valve Manufacturing Model, which we build during the course. For those who are not familiar with the model, you can see that we have metal bars as inputs to the model, and then they go through a series of processes in which they get sawed, coated, hardened, and so on until we have our finished goods as valves which will then get shipped off. We count these using this variable. Now this process currently does not work very well, as we see a large number of blockages and inefficiencies. So we have been given 100,000 pounds to spend in order to optimize the process. As you can see, on the right hand side I have a data table containing all of the different improvements that we can make, along with their associated costs. There are 23 different improvements available, and some can be purchased more than once, leading to a staggering number of scenarios. When there are a large number of parameters and high levels of interconnectedness between them, it can be hard for us to get near to an optimal value because, in this case, there are millions of scenarios and we can't crunch the numbers as quickly as a computer can. Even if we were able to identify the bottlenecks and gradually purchase improvements to deal with these, how would we know that we made the right choice in purchasing, for example, another inspector, over paying less money and getting one of the other cheaper alternatives. It's far easier to give all of the parameters to Witness Experimenter and let it do the hard work while we sit back and relax. We will therefore use an optimization algorithm in Witness Experimenter to improve this manufacturing process. And uh, just to note, I have added variables to count whether an improvement has been purchased or not and coded this into my model. For instance, if we take this hardener, one of our improvements was to decrease the travel time by 10 minutes, uh, which is what I have coded here like so. To open Experimenter, I can go to this menu bar and click on the icon that's two test tubes, or I can go into Model, Experimenter, and then click Advanced Experimenter. Now I will walk you through an experiment that I have already set up, which I will open now. In this experiment, I have added in each of the improvement options as parameters by clicking Add Parameter, finding each one in turn, and inputting their ranges. In this case, it is a minimum of zero, which corresponds to not purchasing that improvement, a maximum of one, and a suggested value of zero, because I am suggesting the default value. Then I would click Add. For each of these parameters, I have added them in like so, with a range of up to four for the buffer capacities, as these are cheaper. This led to the number of unconstrained scenarios being over 100 million, as we can see here. Now, Running that many scenarios would be a huge waste of time and computing resources, which means that we really need to decrease the size of that scenario pool. So, if we click this second button here, we can add constraints to our experiment. In this case, I have added the cost of each improvement as the factor, and because the parameters are binary as to whether or not we have purchased the improvement, we can have them set less than or equal to 100,000 pounds, which was the maximum amount that we could spend. And to further reduce the scenario pool size, I have added a second constraint that is going to ensure that we are spending most of the money that we have been given, as we aren't going to optimize the model by only spending a little bit of the money. This is why I have the 85,000 here. Once I have my constraints in place, I need to tell Experimenter what we are optimizing the model against. So I have to add a response, which in this case is a variable that I have counting how many valves that we have produced, which we saw earlier. To do that, I need to click on this third button, and this is where I would type that variable into this expression box and click OK. Over here on the left-hand side, I would need to make sure that we have that set as the optimization objective. I have added a warm-up of one day, and we are going to run the experiment for 75 hours. The warm-up period ensures that we are not running from empty, and that we have parts in all of our systems for when we start recording data. 
If we click under settings over on the left, we can also adjust some other things about our experiment. In this case, we are going to run the experiment for a maximum of 10,000 scenarios, but we will make sure that we run it for at least 2,500 scenarios. This is going to ensure that once we have found a local optimal solution, that we're still going to search quite a bit more before we quit and are satisfied with that solution. I have also set the number of initial search areas as 20 so that we get more variation in these scenarios. There's much more information on these algorithms and settings in the experimenter help files, which you can find by clicking on the help button here. I have also changed the number of best results that Experimenter will display to 5,000, which will mean that we can analyze all the results of the scenarios rather than just the best ones. Now, without further ado, let's hit play to begin our experiment. As we are running, the objective graph will update showing how each scenario is doing, but we have many scenarios to run, so let's skip ahead to when the experiment is complete. With our experiment now complete, we can see that the experiment duration, which is visible at the top of our interface, was just over five minutes for this example. Now let's look at the results data by clicking into the results section here. We can sort this to look at our best scenarios and use this to examine which parameter choices worked best. These parameter choices can then be used to make improvements in real life or can be used to change parameter ranges for future experimentation. So if we look at these results, we can see there are five scenarios where we achieved our best output values, which is what we have sorted on here. If we look across all of the parameters, then we can see that the only difference in these first five scenarios is that we have different values for the stock buffer capacity. From here, we could choose one of these top scenarios and then right click and set the model with those parameters, which means that when we exit the experimenter, those parameter values will be preloaded into our model. There are also a range of results, charts, and tables along this bottom bar that we can use to examine our results. So if we have a brief look through them, we have box plots variance charts, which are based on the replications, and confidence charts, which are based on the scenario that we have selected. My personal favorite is the parameter analysis tab, as this helps us to understand which parameters have the greatest effect on the objective function. Again, we can sort these by clicking into the column header, and from this tab, we can see that the parameter that gave us the most benefit was adding an additional inspector and then increasing the capacity of the staging area also had a very big effect. So we can go through each of these and see which parameters were very useful to us. And likewise, we can see which had the least impact on our model run. In this example, adding an additional grinder had next to no impact on the overall throughput of our model. So if we were going to rerun the experiment again, we could remove a lot of these parameters as they really don't help us much. This is going to reduce our scenario pool and allow for better experimentation. Using Experimenter can save us a lot of time and headaches as we are making it do the hard work in searching through our millions of scenarios to find which ones are best. But don't just take my word for it. Give it a try and see what it can do for you. For more information about Witness Horizon, please visit our website at www.lanner.com.